So this place is called uh, Muntamaya. So that means the uh, place of the black snake. So this is part of the dreaming and so yeah, really sacred spot. This is a really special, really significant and really sacred animal um, for us here. So it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to look after his country and his place. Being amongst these rako, these trees, hearing more about the relationship of the people to the environment, we can not only interpret and understand, but we can feel. All our knowledge and all our culture, all our language, everything that makes Aboriginal people who they are, comes from the environment. The experts from this local area know what this place needs. And being my first time overseas and exchanging knowledge with Indigenous communities uh, is really special. For Tangata Whenua, the people of the land of Aotearoa, um, we have spent many generations within the lands and getting to understand the landscape, the ecosystems and how to coexist and live with nature. Science is missing out if it doesn't consider those insights and that knowledge system. The project is really about uh, co-designing better tools uh, that ultimately will bring community resilience and will help to save lives, infrastructure and ecosystems. There's so many variable health levels of our environment and when it comes to fire we don't get many chances to get it right and that's where this SmartSat project has a lot of value to Indigenous communities. Earth observation technologies uh, or satellites orbiting the Earth uh, are very useful tools to monitor the flammability of the landscape because they provide a consistent, regular uh, measurement of the land. It would be good to use this technology and if our communities had access to that satellite data, we could help rebuild our seasonal calendars. And we can put all that information into really understanding what's happening in the country. Using this uh, satellite derived uh, information about flammability and fuel, calibrated with cultural local knowledge, can give us that overview of the readiness of the landscape to burn. And with that, we can know and better plan fire mitigation strategies. This block in particular, we've been burning, um, using cultural practices to manage the fuel. The rest of the park has been left up to Western management or left to wildfire. So trying to compare how this is recovering and how it's responding to cultural practices compared to places that have been neglected or harmfully managed. We are both interested in fire management, in fuel moisture and how we can predict when and where fires are all going to occur or how severe they're going to be, which is what we are interested in. How would a satellite measure fuel moisture content in different areas of the country? Grass fire is a, is a key part of our culture. It's a very sacred part of our culture. Using it in a larger scale in the environment is something that I'm personally quite interested in. In Aotearoa, we are slowly starting to see the visible effects and impacts of wildfire. There's a level of readiness that we, we have to prepare ourselves for in terms of climate changing, our environment changing, fuels changing. I think that in New Zealand we have this really great opportunity because we don't yet have a fuel moisture system and we're actually going to go out and collect fuel moisture data for the purpose of creating one. But we have an opportunity to involve Maori communities in that data collection. It can help us to calibrate new satellites, to calibrate new payloads to be launched into the future to better monitor the flammability. It's become our responsibility yeah, to lead that process in assessing the country, looking at it, understanding its health, using fire to treat those different yeah, symptoms that are appearing in our landscape. So healing the country with fire, 
to start restoring balance and health back into the environment. We have a lot of opportunity to learn from other countries um, and almost jumpstart that learning. And it's about building those connections and those relationships with other mob. It's very important because that creates that mosaic and safe country. We are learning from Ado and their traditional knowledge. We are learning from Maori traditional knowledge. And we are also sharing the way in which we do things. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, this could be getting ready to flower. Learning and seeing uh, Ado uh, assessing the land uh, in country was very special. We have characterized uh, the landscape with all possible sensors uh, that we have, not only our eyes and satellite sensors, but also uh, our nose, our hands. I've been going through this site and this site, doing surveys and then, yeah, trying to oversee that and see what the satellite's looking at. Because it's the same ecosystem, but this one's starting to recover and we're starting to bring balance back to that. And then on this side, you can see it's still a long way to go. But you can see change and they can see it now and the next lot of burnings are easier and easier again. Looking at the environment through the lenses of how fire is a teacher and a tool, or will be used as a tool, is something that is new to me. With the smoke, we want white smoke. Like with that smoking ceremony, that's the cleansing smoke and that's the medicine for these trees. The knowledge and understanding that we have of our environment is applicable to other mob. You know, it has to be shifted to suit their environment, their language and their culture. Seeing the the parallels and even the synchronicities of the two knowledge systems, the scientific information being able to support indigenous communities, of course, and being able to have perhaps a wider resolution or view of scale, almost like an extension of our senses. And also going the other way for indigenous communities and indigenous perspectives, indigenous knowledge to support scientists and being able to understand nuances within the landscape. Yeah, looking at these, so when I get the, the branch, I always come down, you know, at least three leaves. A lot of the leaves, you know, once they get dry enough, you can just bend it like that and it's gonna crack or split. So you can hear it, you can feel it, like yeah. there's not much stickiness, there's not much moisture or oil in there. It's an excellent use case because it's essentially a calibration exercise. What is it that they're finding important before burning or during a burn that will control the flammability of the landscape versus what we measure and how we measure it. We do this again for every tree in every site. For the spectral data, we collect it using two imaging spectrometers that simulate what a satellite would see. And we also collect fuel moisture content from leaves. We take those leaves to the laboratory, run some analysis, and we get fuel moisture. So these are things that, yeah, we've always looked for in, in the environment. But it was really reassuring to have two different methodologies looking at the same thing so we could validate each other. And this is how we measure what you were measuring, the volatiles. It's really good, it makes us proud to see yeah, that we're able to manage this country successfully and produce the outcomes that, yeah, we've been striving to achieve. Yeah, there's a lot of mushrooms as well. So that's a great sign. So if we get it right, this have tremendous impacts in keeping communities safe, reintroducing cultural burning practices, but also saving ecosystems and especially those that are so important for indigenous communities, but also to us. This project has been able to see how indigenous people's knowledge can potentially strengthen those data sets. We want people to come back and reconnect because all these trees, they, they've relied on people. That's how they've evolved and adapted is 
having people as a part of their symbiotic relationship 